Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for coming on this historic day for the Catholic Church. This afternoon, Archbishop Joseph Kurtz, the Archbishop of Louisville, and also the Vice President of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops will be addressing you with, with some statements about our new Holy Father and then provide some time for some questions. Archbishop Kurtz. Thank you, Brian. Good afternoon, everyone. How good to be with all of you and uh, in such an exciting, exciting day for the life of the church and I think also uh, for the life of our whole world. Let me give you a statement and then uh, be very open to your, your comments. Almost 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ called from among his disciples a Galilean fisherman by the name of Simon to be one of the 12 apostles. And in renaming him Peter, Christ said this, you are Peter and upon this rock I will build my church, Matthew 16, 18. After the death and resurrection of Jesus, this fisherman, now an apostle of Jesus Christ, came to Rome as our first Holy Father. And it is that calling, establishing the Patrine ministry that we celebrate today. As the world hears the now famous words Habemus Papam and views the white smoke, it is with joy that we in the Archdiocese of Louisville welcome this wonderful news. May Jesus Christ be praised. You know, more than one billion Catholics from every continent in the world, as well as people of goodwill, can rejoice in this historic occasion. Continuing the Patrine ministry, our Holy Father will foster the unity founded in the truth and charity of Jesus Christ. And it is in this unity that we as a family rejoice. Our new Holy Father, Cardinal Jorge Mario Bergoglio, is the first pope from outside of Europe now in over 2,000 years and is the first Jesuit pope. He's a retired cardinal from Argentina and he has taken the name Pope Francis I. Now, as gifted as Pope Francis is, it is noteworthy, and I certainly was taken very heavily by this, that the first two themes that he demonstrated to the world was first of all his deep desire for prayer. He began by praying for uh, Pope Emeritus Benedict in gratitude by praying for one another and then by leading everyone in praying the Lord's Prayer, the Our Father, the Hail Mary, and the Glory Be, uh, and then ended by asking if others would pray for him. So his beginning with prayer, I think, is noteworthy. His second is obvious. He chose the name Francis. This is the first time a pope has ever chosen the name Francis, and St. Francis of Assisi is universally known as a man of great simplicity. So uh, I can't tell you how grateful and honored and thrilled I am. I'd like to call upon Catholics of the Archdiocese, as well as all people of goodwill, to join me in praying for our Holy Father, Pope Francis I. Uh, please join me in celebrating a Mass of Thanksgiving tomorrow at noon at our Cathedral of the Assumption. And now with those opening remarks, I'd be happy to uh, address any questions that I can answer. Yes, sir. Uh, as far as the conclave only lasting two days and just the five, five, five votes, votes, right? Um, what message does that send as far as uh, the solidarity of the, the, the cardinals and the Catholic community? Yeah, pro probably the biggest message. It's, in fact, I think you just gave me that answer. Uh, the biggest message is unity. Uh, for, for the 115 cardinals that quickly to come together, and to, as you know, uh, we don't know all the proceedings within the conclave, the word means with key, uh, but we do know this, that the rules require that at least 77 of the 115 cardinals who were voting would be voting for the pope. So that's uh, that solidarity so quickly. I'm not sure uh, if there are many examples of that kind of rallying in unity uh, in the world in any stage. So I'm thrilled to know. In fact, uh, I guess I was surprised as anybody else to see the white smoke uh, come, come so quickly. Yeah, so great unity, I think. Yes, Peter. Patricia, have, have you met? The... You know what, I have not. Now, uh, 
uh, believe it or not, I was in Buenos Aires, and I was trying to think back, because I thought you might ask that question. Um, I was in Buenos Aires for a Salem meeting, and that would have been just shy of five years ago. As you probably know, uh, the officers of the United States Conference of Bishops, the Conference of Bishops in Canada, and then those who are involved in Salem, which is a kind of a super Episcopal conference that covers all of Latin America. Uh, we meet once a year. And uh, the meeting at that time took place in outside of Buenos Aires, actually. And I remember uh, visiting uh, a, a shrine of our, our Blessed Mother, a shrine uh, of Luján, I think they, they would say in Spanish. And uh, I was impressed by the fact that Buenos Aires may be one of the most Catholic countries in the whole world in terms of percentage. I know, I know there's great growth and there's, there's great uh, uh, and lively faith in, uh, in Argentina. But I never did have the, the privilege to visit him. I did have a chance to visit the grave of his predecessor, Cardinal per, uh, per, uh, Perineo. Perineo, I think, is, is the cardinal. So uh, all the things I've heard about our new Holy Father are exciting. Obviously, as I said in my statement, just read his bio and you know how gifted he is. He's been a professor. He's uh, uh, been a great administrator. He's known for the administration that, that he's done and some of, of the, the renovations and pastoral programs that have occurred in Buenos Aires since he became the archbishop there, I think, in 1998. And um, he, uh, he, with all of that, however, whenever someone speaks about him, they speak about him being a spiritual man and a simple man. Wow, what, what a gift we have in the church, huh? Can you touch on that about him being a simple man? Because they were commenting on the cross that he was wearing um, was his own that was very simple and not didn't have any jewels on it or anything like that. Gosh, I should have paid attention to, uh, to other, other announcements in the past. I didn't notice that. Uh, I, I, I was especially struck I guess less by what he was wearing and more by the tone of his voice. I, I thought it was kind of uh, interesting that he said the cardinals have, I, this is not an exact quote, but something like, uh, uh, the cardinals have elected someone from far away. And then he says, but here I am. And it was a very beautiful and very calming way. And then for him to move so quickly to prayer, weren't you surprised at that? And, uh, and to ask for prayers, he acknowledged. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, which I thought was, was gracious and, and right. And, uh, and then to, to call everyone to pray together. And the first prayer he says is the prayer that Jesus taught us. Remember from sacred scripture when people, uh, the disciples said, what, Jesus, why don't you teach us to pray like others? And he said, and he said, fine. And he taught the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer. And that's the first prayer that he said. And then, of course, the Hail Mary, which is a great prayer of devotion and very scripturally based. And then the doxology, glory be to the Father. So I think beginning in prayer uh, makes me feel that, that our Holy Father is moving us right through the centuries back to the person of Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what Pope Benedict has asked us to do, to come into a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and in doing that, to share it with others in the new evangelization. I know the news and the details about the new pope are obviously just sort of minutes old, but what sort of changes do you see in the administration now under Pope Francis? Yeah, very, very interesting. Well, I think he said something about uh, what he's going to do. He's going to go back to roots, isn't he? He's going to go back to, uh, as I would say it, to, uh, first of all, to, to prayer, to being grounded in faith. And so those who would want him to immediately get into some uh, bureaucratic analysis uh, probably will, will have to be patient. Uh, uh, he is known, the little bit I've read about it, is that he did seek to begin many pastoral programs as well as to streamline things in, in Argentina. So if that's a clue, I guess that's good news. But yet, uh, that's not the first thing people mention when they mention his name. And as you know, he's, he uh, had been talked about at the last conclave as being someone who could have been elected to pope. So he's not new to everyone in that sense. He's well respected. Yeah. Yes. You comment on he being the first Latin American. Oh, it's a great thing. I'm going to uh, habla un poquito en español. I have to learn more Spanish, don't I? 
Yeah, so I, I think it's wonderful. I think it's a testimony to, uh, first of all, the reality of the universality of the church. That's, that's first and foremost. Secondly, it's an awareness, isn't it, that, uh, that uh, our Holy Father is coming from an area in which there is a great expression of faith. And, um, and of course, the richness that we see within the United States of devotion and of enthusiasm for the faith is often coming from families who are recently here. I just had a, a wonderful celebration of a gathering space uh, at St. Rita's, uh, a, 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 an addition that was just made. And, and so many, they say what, what the Mass in Spanish, you, you really have to almost get a ticket. I'm teasing about that. You don't really need a ticket, but I mean, it's packed. So uh, I think it's a great testimony to the universality of the church. Yeah. Yes, sir. Disappointed it wasn't American? Oh, no, I'm, well, could you, could you does, do I look disappointed? <laughs> Not at all. I, uh, I, I think, uh, I, in a sense, it is, um, when there was a synod that Pope, now blessed John Paul II had on the Americas, it wasn't a synod for North America. It was a synod for the Americas. And that synod was located in a parasita which is in Brazil. And so I think when, when the church looks at America, it looks at North and South America. And so in a sense, I think um, one of our brothers was elected Pope. Yeah. Yes, sir. To get someone from one of the Americas, is that a step closer to maybe opening the door for an American Pope? Uh, a North American place? A North American, okay. I'm <laughs> uh, I guess so. You know, I, I'll go back to what I, I believe I heard Cardinal George quoted as saying uh, when before the conclave began, and he said people are going to talk about the age of the Pope, and they're going to talk about the country he comes from, but the truth is uh, we, and he was talking about his brother Cardinals, we as Cardinals need to concentrate on the gifts of the person, on the gifts needed, and who have those gifts, and I think that's what they did. I think what you saw in the first statements is the most important news today, that here we have a very spiritual and simple person who has served Christ and the church very well and now is called to even greater sacrificial service, really. Yeah. Yes, sir. Last night we talked a little bit about social media and Twitter and how you have an account. How important is that going to be playing a role in reaching out to it's going to be very. I don't know. It's going to be very important. Obviously, I don't know. For example, whether Pope Francis I is tweeting. I guess we could find that out quickly, can't we? Uh, however, uh, I think uh, making use of the of the modern media is something that every leader and certainly every spiritual leader is going to have to do. Whether that person does it b on their own or with the help of others. But you're, you're absolutely right. The, the, uh, the media is the modern communication. I think I mentioned that to someone last night uh, at a gathering, that if St. Paul the missionary were alive today and traveling around, boy, would he be using the modern media. Yeah, and thank you, by the way, all of you for being here. Yes, sir. The, so there was a study within the past couple of days saying that there are fewer people who are identifying themselves as Catholic in America than ever before since they've been taking these studies. Do you, um, what do you think that the new pope has to do as the, the central figure in the church to, uh, to change that, to reverse yeah. that? I, I think the, um, I guess the, the story really is that there are few people identifying themselves with a formal religion. Actually, I think if you get into the Pew study and, and really break it down, you'll find that of those who were originally Catholic, a higher percentage remain Catholic than in other other denominations or other religions. However, I think that's really not the news. The news is the synod that uh, just was conducted uh, last October on the new evangelization. And the new evangelization is not calling for new programs. It's calling for a new enthusiasm and a, a new order. And I saw that now in a very gentle way, I thought, with Pope Francis. But I saw an enthusiasm uh, almost uh, a, a way of setting people at ease in calling them to prayer. And I, I don't know if you picked up the interaction that occurred with him and however many people gathered 
uh, at, in, uh, in St. Peter's Square, but I, I think as many as could fit there, that's how many were there. Uh, uh, I think that's a, that bodes well for the future, yeah. Pope Benedict cited some health concerns for stepping down. At 76, do you think that Pope Francis, it's, it's a good enough age to sort of lead the church in full esteem for several years? Well, that's a good point. Uh, 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 I would say the cardinals probably took that into account, and everything, I don't know a lot about our new Holy Father and his health, but everything that I've heard about him is that he is a healthy person and lives a, a good, healthy life. I guess he'll be, I'll probably find out what he's eating and try to, imitate him a little bit. Um, we live in an age in which it's, it's remarkable how well people uh, can live healthy lives much longer than had been in the past. And so uh, it, it's hard to predict, isn't it, uh, how long he will serve as our Holy Father? Uh, I hope it's going to be for, for many, many years. Yeah. Yes. How, how important is it to get to have gotten through this and to get a new pope in place and, and kind of acquainted with the job as we go into the Easter season. Oh, I, well, uh, oh, I thought you were going to say the new millennium. <laughs> yes, no, Easter season, great. I, th I think that's that's right. I think it. Uh, I think electing a pope, it, it should take as long as it needs to take. So, in other words, we as Americans, of course, uh, we pride getting things done quickly, and so uh, naturally. Uh, all of us are in smiles and, and that, that it happens so quickly. Isn't it the, the quickest in a hundred years, somebody told me? I don't know if that's true, but they said in the last hundred years, this is the fastest uh, election. Uh, you'll be able to verify that on some, some uh, check uh, website. Um, but I, I think the, the notion of, uh, of the timeliness, if it would have taken us into the Easter season, we'd probably have good theological bases for saying how good that was too. However, uh, I, would, I would agree with you that as we move into the holiest week of the year for us, Holy Week, and as we celebrate uh, the Triduum, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, Easter Sunday, uh, to have a Holy Father leading us uh, is really a great, great gift. Uh, I haven't heard anything about when he will be installed, but my guess would be it would be before that. So, yeah, I, I think that's great. Yeah. Yes, Peter. The following up on an earlier question, what message does his election, how do you think it will be received by Hispanic members of the Archdiocese? Oh, I, 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 my guess is, of course, people can speak for themselves, but, and you'll want to interview, but I think they'll be, uh, they'll be thrilled. I mean, wouldn't you, if, uh, if you had someone who uh, was Latino being uh, nominated and, and actually elected as a Holy Father, you know, I certainly would be thrilled. Yeah. How are Louisvillians sort of reacting to the news and finding him relatable and things like that? Well, it's too early to you specifically about him, but I think the news of, uh, of having a Holy Father and having an interest uh, is probably spoken to with the uh, your interest, the fact that so many of you have come here and that there's really been a great press about this. I think it's good because in many ways our Holy Father is a spiritual leader for people of goodwill too, without imposing himself on others, uh, to the extent that, that he is able to draw out spiritual gifts and blessings of all people, Catholics and beyond. Uh, that's a great gift to our world, isn't it? And so. Uh, I get a sense that there's a great amount of enthusiasm. The people who, who write to me, I, I just uh, actually got a, a clip from a nice article that uh, Dr. Timothy George, who's a friend of mine down in Birmingham, Alabama, that he just did for First Things. And uh, it's, a great, it's a good article. You ought to read it on someone who himself is not Catholic talking about uh, a new Holy Father. Where were you when you uh, learned of the, uh, the white smoke and, and the uh, election? I went back t to the rectory where I live because I was getting ready for a mass I'm taping tonight. Uh, it's a mass of the air. And, and so um, uh, I was watching TV and naturally, probably like the rest of you, was waiting like everybody else for the black smoke. And then when I saw white smoke coming out, I thought, well, I, I, maybe I'm saying things. And then the, the people who were commenting said, no, it looks white. And the bell started to ring. There was just a sense of excitement that came. And I think, maybe I was imagining things. I think the bells of the cathedral, I live 
right on the third floor of the cathedral rectory, I think the bells of the cathedral began to ring too. I hope that wasn't my imagination. And uh, it, was, uh, it was just a great uh, sense. I almost felt like I was at St. Peter's Square myself, you know, and I'm sure many people throughout the world felt that with the way modern media allows us to, to come into it. So it was th I was thrilled. Yes, sir, we have one more question. And there were reports that back in 2005, Pope Francis was almost elected, uh, but it, of course it was Ratzinger. What does that say to you um, about his character, about uh, his history, that he was so close last time? Well, of course, uh, I, I never can take too seriously uh, reports of something that's supposed to be confidential, so I really don't know about that. However, I will say this, that I do know, even though I've never met our Holy Father, and I look forward to my first meeting with him, uh, I do know him as a man of integrity, and that is universal. Uh, he has been well known as, as someone who is deeply spiritual, uh, who is selfless, and so when, when people, when the, the cardinals were talking at the beginning saying they would like to, to seek someone who had qualities that reminded them of Jesus, I thought, you know, I, I don't think they've done too bad of a job. Yeah, hey, thanks very much. Again, there will be a, a service tomorrow at the cathedral at noon. Uh, there'll be an opportunity then, and no doubt many of our parishes will also have similar celebrations in the coming days. Thanks, everybody, for being here today. <laughs>